Okay, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Avnish Raman. Um, I'm the board member and um, director for Leadership PG, is also on the Leadership PG alumni, and I have much pleasure in inviting all of you to the Reserve Bank of Fiji. Uh, thank you for a great attendance. Before I go on to introduce the speaker for today, I have much pleasure in letting all of you know um, the number of uh, organizations represented in the, room, in the room today. Like all of you have come on your individual capacity because you wanted to come to this program. But uh, it's not only the Leadership Fiji alumni that's present here. We have friends of Leadership Fiji alumni. So just a quick run through on the organizations represented today. We've got BSP Life, about 18 of them here. So thank you, BSP Life. BSP Bank is here. Westpac Bank, uh, Lindust, MWH Global, Ali Specific, Communications Fiji Limited, Flower Mills of Fiji, TFL, FDB, FNPF, Reserve Bank of Fiji, HSC, FNU, and Mindbell. So uh, congratulations to all of you who are able to come today and to partake in this uh, session. Uh, we wanted, unfortunately, the demand was so much that I had to shortlist about 35 people as well. We couldn't accommodate everyone because even though there's space at the back of the room, Mayor's request was that we should have a nice talk session over here so you can interact better with all of you. Now, I am not the main person for today at all. I don't want to steal the center stage from Mayor, but let me just take a quick five minutes or two minutes to introduce Mayor. So Mayor Kalbak, as you must have seen in the flyer, is the leadership coach and trainer. He's the youngest leadership trainer and coach amongst the panel of trainers for the prestigious Confederation of Indian Industry, or better known as the CII. He's a corporate trainer and behavioral coach for the entire staff of 1,100 employees of Flower Mills of Fiji. And we thank Flower Mills of Fiji, Kirti, the group HR, uh, who has allowed Mayur to come and do the training for us. So thank you, Kirti. Uh, Mayur's unique approach and style towards delivering his leadership in revolves around conflict interactivity and independence for the participants. Mayur is also an author and poet and has written a book of poetry titled The Rising Waterfall and you can search for that on the Amazon um, website. He's an adventure and trekker. He's very spiritual as well. When I first interacted with him, uh, we talked a bit about his spiritual journey and he's trekked the Himalayas along with his guru, especially the Kailas Parvat and the Mansarovar Lake in the Himalayas. He's an artist by a profession, as, uh, by uh, passion, and he's paying spiritual abstracts and has also um, so you can see he's an all-rounder, and I will not dwell much on this. Let's start with the session proper, and I have much pleasure inviting Mayur to present. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> it asked me to send send him a, an introduction, so I said I'm going to send a very small one so that it doesn't uh, you know we don't spend too much time on it. Thank you very much for coming. Is my voice reachable, that side? Yes. Are you able to? Yeah, thanks for the yes. The lady there? The elegant one? You can? OK, fine. Of course you are. And uh, so this is a little different for me because I'm used to conducting workshops. I would straight away say a few things and make you sit in a group, give you some chart papers, make you talk <coughs> things, do interpretations. So this is a little different. So I want your complete cooperation on this, OK? You can observe me, but it will be nice if you can just join me in this journey. Um, it'll make me feel more comfortable. I'm not, as I said, used to talking a lot at a stretch, frankly speaking. I like when all of us work together. We make group presentations and stuff. But having said that, it is an amazing opportunity for me to come here and uh, present myself. But more than presenting myself, it's also presenting certain things which um, some of the organizations in Fiji, some of the organizations across Earth, uh, in my 15 years of being a so-called trainer, they have understood that Mayur doesn't actually present himself, he presents some interesting thoughts upon which you can think about yourself. Okay. So when Avanish told me that it's about a 45 minute talk, what would you like to talk about? What would you like to present? So, you know, I was, I'm very intrigued by reptiles. I like because if you look at a snake, it's, it looks very helpless actually, it doesn't have legs, nothing, but the moment you see a snake, the first thing I would do is take 10 steps back, it's natural. But it's actually something which doesn't have a lot. But more than a snake, I was, I'm always intrigued by certain things like the centipede which I heard quite a lot here uh, in Fiji, not too many wild animals, but definitely these things are there. But 
I thought of why not the scorpion? Because it has its own personality. You know, if you if while I'm seated, if I see a rat going <coughs> across, I won't jump and all. I just say it as a rat. But if I see a scorpion passing by, I'm going to stand up. So no, my, my point was, it's such a small thing, but it can create a, such an impact. But if you're thinking I'm going to speak about the the biological and the other aspects of a scorpion, I'm not. I thought, let me think about what can we learn from the scorpion, which may not be by looking at the animal as such, but by looking at the name scorpion, all right? So yes, by as an animal, it has got its own personality. You know, it stings. But I want this session for all of us to sting ourselves <coughs> in a good way. And I'd like to begin, therefore, because I don't have a lot of time, and I don't want to unnecessarily elongate this session. I want to make it a pun session. So let me straight away start the session by putting a question, and it's going to be interactive to an extent, which means it's not that I'm going to ask you to keep talking to me. It's not possible because we don't have time. But even interacting with your own self in terms of thinking on your own about something that I've said is also interactivity. So I'm going to ask you a question. Probably it's a question to which I'll answer myself, but it'll at least trigger an answer within your minds. And that's the way this session is going to have its own approach. All right. So the question that was put to me once in a seminar, which is what I'm putting to you, in the way we can look at this session, our own participation, the question is, does cow give milk? The question is, does cow give milk? <clears throat> so obviously, a person who's been invited to this forum can't ask such a pleasantly stupid question. Because it's like, what are you talking about? Because I haven't seen a bull doing that ever. Neither have I seen paneer or curds coming out of the cow. So what kind of a question is this? Right, Naveen, I know a few people. And some of them have come because they just love me. Yeah, and I want that wacky laugh, and you don't have to curtail your hysterical laughs also. It's chill, you know. And feel free, all right? So, so does, does cow give milk? Because I, like I said, it's, but it has a meaning, obviously. I'm not that stupid. So the same question was asked to me, and then it was again asked, and let me put the same question again. So initially I said, does cow give milk? And then if I asked, does cow give milk? Have you seen somebody seated with a milk business? He's got 20 cows. He's seated on the sofa reading a newspaper, keeps looking once in a while to the cows and checking whether the cows are giving milk. So are you, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. It's a play of words, but there's a meaning to it. A cow actually doesn't give the milk. I wish it could. You can't see the cow just being happily giving. Yeah, You can't even imagine it. you got to take it. You got to take some effort to extract the milk. That effort is what I request all of you to do in this session. All right? Because, okay, let me be clear. I'm not that cow here. <laughs> From all angles, I probably should look more like a bull. <laughs> but the point is, we, if we come here, I'm sincerely urging all of you, apart from deciphering me as this guy with a black kurta normally worn in Diwali time in Fiji, what is he wearing? Apart from that, also pick up a few things from this session. And I'm not being sarcastic, I'm just having some fun here, all right? So uh, the point is, after the session, when we go back, if there is maybe a couple of things that you've taken back, not only for yourself, but even for your teams, I think then I would feel more satisfied here. Because like I said, I'm not too much into the talk thing. But if you can extract a few things, and therefore let me start by, by, by conceptualizing the scorpion. So like I said, we're not going to look at the biological aspects. I'm looking at the word scorpion. I'm looking at the alphabets that make the word scorpion. So in a way, when you go back and you say, I've understood the scorpion, though to an unknown person it may sound a little different, that I, what do you mean you understood the scorpion? Or if you say, I'm going to, I'm going to implement the scorpion, the English sentence-wise, it will really sh you know, sh uh, shake somebody, saying that, what do you, what do you mean by implement the scorpion, but the way we are positioning it is that they're going to look at every alphabet of this particular term and try to see if, ha if it has some meaning or some value related to leadership. But in that, I would still encourage your own participation, all right? So as you can see, this is the biological aspect, the scorpion and the sting. 
But this is what I want you to focus on. Maybe the angle is a little tough, but still uh, try your best to see it. There are chairs here, so you can come in the front, those people. For the frontal view, it's okay. Let me start with that which I believe a leader should awaken. And when I say I believe, I therefore say that it's up to you how you take it. But I believe a leader should. And I'm looking at not, you know, have I written it correctly? Is it spelled correctly? Yeah. Alright, let's check it. So, so I'd like to not go by the typical from the first alphabet downwards. I'm looking at that which for me is important, may not be the most important. And that one is this one. That's the I of the scorpion. Not the I only, the alphabet I of the scorpion. I would say that if somebody is here, if I'm here, I want to enhance myself as a leader, then this I plays a good role. As a leader, it helps me. So I have that word in my mind, and I'm sure you're thinking about it. I'm sure. I have a, you know, I have growth, I have a team, and I need to. So what could this I be? Okay. So I just want it to be a little louder because your eyes are as important as mine. Let me be very clear. <laughs> you know the beauty of this session is there'll be at least 20 scorpions running around. <laughs> More. More. Thank you so much. And those and those scorpions will sting you in a very different way, isn't it? You'll be like, wow, give me more. <laughs> the sting I'm talking about. Okay, so you raise your hand, I'll come to your lady. Yes. Okay. Inspire. All right. Anyone? Integrity. Integrity. How do you elaborate integrity? Like, what do you, what comes to your mind when the word comes integrity for a leader? <coughs> like a sense of honesty or something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. You have to be a person of integrity such that um, you know that when you leave, that in itself you at least seek respect from others. You want to listen to you. You have certain values. That Absolutely. You Absolutely. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I think you raised your hand, sir. Yeah. Innovation. 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 Okay. There's a risk to my session, by the way. You know what the risk is? The risk is there is no element of surprise for me. But I'm willing to take that risk because it's fun. Because I don't have any ego that my eye should be something unbelievable because already that eye has come. But still, the fun is to explore more. So, one is integrity. Um, inspire, such a powerful word, isn't it? They say that we, you know, you can motivate by words, but you can inspire by act, by actions, by actually doing, and that stays with for a longer time. Like somebody said, practice what you preach; it touches you more. Any other eye? Just need one or two. Intelligent, intelligent, wisdom, making decisions, not just ad hoc, but thinking and making decisions. Intelligent, <laughs> absolutely. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, intelligence need not be only through academics only. Probably experience can be a better teacher, isn't it, sir? Absolutely. Okay, so understand, I have only little time, so I could go on and I could do a 45 minute on I. It's fun. I mean, we do programs of a day or two on innovation. Actually, that's the word. <coughs> so basically, what about integrity? What about inspire? They're probably more powerful words, but this is my session. So. <laughs> So you have to give me that, that freedom. And let me be very frank with you. It's, it is my session. I'm just kidding. Now what I mean is, it is what I believe. So it's not like I'm going to push it to you guys, but I'm putting it out. That I think today, today, apart from inspiring people, apart from talking about, you know, and, and, and demonstrating values of integrity, I think if I want to be a successful leader, I need to be a person of new ideas. I need to think out of the box. I need to be a person who not only is innovative, but also inspires innovation in the team. So I feel in marketing, in sales, in production, there could be innovation which can play a very important role. And innovation need not be something enormous. It could be simple innovation. I also have another word which is related to innovation, which is improvisation. You can improvise on a process. You know the stapler? Which, which, which we staple paper, I think that's a very simple thing, all right? One of the interesting challenges is you never know when it ends because it's unseen, right? 
So sometimes it, it doesn't work and then you check, you say it's over or maybe just one or two remaining or something. So there was a small girl, this was in India, and it seems, it came in the papers, she just said why not put a mark on maybe the, you know when you put, before you insert those clips, maybe on the last, the, the fourth last or the third last, put a mark. You know why? Because when you're clicking and when you see the mark, it's an indication that it's coming to an end. You're understanding what I'm saying? Yes. It's a simple thing, but it is an innovation. It's an improvisation. Sometimes a very important paper gets stuck, huh? And then you very carefully want to remove that because it's come out in a, in a wrong way. So simple innovations can also be very interesting. So what am I saying to all of you? I mean, if you look at innovation in terms of Facebook, there was a time we used to use mobiles. Before that, telephones. Today, communication is not SMSs, it's WhatsApp. I would say this is a person's desire to do something beyond. So for me, if I want to be a more effective leader, I want to be an innovative leader. In fact, I just came back from a session and we were talking about why not create an innovations team in an organization. There wasn't. And then we talk about we need to have new ideas to, to, to you know, deal with our competitors. Today, innovation will rule. The way you market your product, the way you package your product, if it's different, people will look at you. Look at advertising as a, as, as a professional, as a function. So I think, for me, innovation is that that I need to improve upon. Can I go to the next one? Yes. All right, so this is how we're going to go, all right? And you're going to help me out. Hmm? So I'll just put the word so that we know we get done with it. All right. So BSP, right. I have you. So what does BSP stand for? BSP is in the letters or BSP is in the letters? I don't know, just make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Your buying time, I know, but still. <laughs> it's called the art of buying time. Rebound technique. No, 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 come on, tell me what BSP stands for. Well, BSP as an organization is... Uh, what does BSP stand for? Oh, Convert BSP into an acronym. Oh. <clears throat> Brave, searching for opportunities, <laughs> and passion. Something like that? could be all right so it means that if you want to be innovative you have to keep practicing innovation <coughs> innovation is a mind exercise it doesn't come like I want one kilo of innovation at MH it doesn't come like that we got to stretch our imagination start painting start writing poetry <coughs> if it's a bad poetry call it an abstract poetry it works <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'm doing paintings I do the worst painting sometimes I paint very good I turn it around like wow this is very different <laughs> what is it abstract Good. <laughs> Ten times the money. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> Think about it. It's all here. <coughs> Innovation is here. So therefore, I also request all of us, and I'll come to that later, but there is something that we need to do every day to open that innovative mind. <coughs> it cannot be something that we demand. I need to be innovative. It puts stress. I want to go to the next one. I've not even made it up, so I don't know. I'm thinking what to write. <laughs> okay, what does I'm supposed to write now? What does C stand for? Creativity. Yeah. Who said creativity? Great, sir. That's the cousin of innovation. I'll say hi to him. You're right. You're right. But they're both together. They've come together for the session. Innovation and creativity. You're right. But any other word? Come on. Huh? Cooperation is, is teamwork. Perfectly fine. Okay. Can you be a little more innovative and actually start uh, saying something? Say something. Say coconut. <laughs> when you when you when you you know grind the nuts and put cocoa in it, the different coconut. Be a little, you know. I mean, I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. Feel, don't look at me so seriously. <laughs> Communication, again, okay, all right. Courage. Who said courage? Absolutely, courage. I'll just come to you. I'll come to you, Mohammed, right? I'll come to you. Courage, can you just elaborate on courage? Fearless. Absolutely. In which way would you say that, like, as a leader in that context? Not being afraid to take the extra step. Correct. Courage to make tough decisions. 
In fact, I would say even to be innovative, we need courage. You know, there was this beautiful uh, statement on innovation. It's the art of breaking rules with responsibility. You know, it's beautiful. It's a very loaded statement, but it's very interesting to think about. But to do that, to break the rules, as the lady said, you need the courage. So we have that. So I'm very happy we're having many scorpions, all right? And uh, yes, Mohammed, tell me. Challenges. Challenges, absolutely. Uh, you'll have to just elaborate a little bit when you say challenges. What do you mean by challenges? Okay. Okay. Fine. <coughs> Last one from here. Hi, how are you? Hi. Charm. Charm. Yeah, that you are. <laughs> that you are a good, lovely representation of. Unless you meant it for me, and thank you so much. I'm good at assuming wrongly. When the word that I feel as a leader I should have is is that which makes me connect with people, but that's not the C. There's a beauty of this, you know, by even speaking, some other C's come in. They're like, knock, knock, can I come in? Connectivity would be one. But I would say a simple word which one of the ladies spoke about. What do you say? Absolutely. I've seen a leader who says, he comes, there's a team, he says, uh, so today we have to now uh, talk about growth for the company. So have you got a... This is not the way we communicate. <laughs> Lady said inspire. I'm not going to get inspired by that communication. Communication is something which bridges the gaps here. Yeah. Communication can solve conflicts. But as a leader, what kind of communication? I would say when I want to inspire somebody, even if I want to reprimand somebody, my communication has to be very tactful. For example, in a meeting, a normal communication where I want to disagree will be, I don't agree with you. Because that is the way I would say normally. I don't agree with you. Somebody would say, I disagree with you. But communication could be also where you say it in a very diplomatic manner. Because I may want to disagree with my senior, but I'm feeling a little... So as a leader who I am, representing my team, if I'm communicating with my senior, I should have a way of saying, I don't agree with you. And I could say it as, I understand what you say, sir, <clears throat> but I have a slightly different point of view. Which means I am disagreeing, but I'm not saying it that way. So he says, are you disagreeing with me? So I say, I, sir, I'm not disagreeing, but I have a different point of view. Can I, can I be allowed to just share it? Different point of view is positive communication. I disagree with you could be a little negative. I'm talking about in the context of where you communicate to seniors. This is one example of it. I also want to highlight about communication a few things which I just demonstrated. A lot of times I find people's verbal communication as a leader gets affected for whatever reasons. Sometimes a guy looks like a leader till he opens his mouth. Because what he wants to say, the content is inspirational. But the expression probably dampens that inspiration of the person. It's like somebody asks me, Mayur, as a leader, are you confident? And if I say, uh, yes, sir. yes, sir, I'm confident. It doesn't come across. That is communication. He actually is, but there's a gap between what he thinks and what he expresses. So if I want to be a good leader, I need to enhance my communication skills, lady. You're right. So what do I focus on? I'm talking about myself. If it makes sense to you, then please note it down, maybe, in your mind. I would say two or three things. One is, as a leader, I should have effective verbal modulations. <coughs> when I speak, there has to be a few things. I should be loud enough that my confidence reaches the person. I should be clear enough that my words will be understood. It sounds specific when I'm clear. And at the same time, there's a word which the great legendary Muhammad Ali demonstrated. Unfortunately, he's no more with us, but he was a legend in boxing. A boxer does something inside the ring that we could do while we speak. So that we sound, we are understood as a real strong leader. Something that even I'm using as, as I'm conducting a session. Now, am I a leader here? Actually, in some way I am because I'm leading you towards the understanding of this subject. So technically, in that sense, I'm a leader. But all of us are leaders. So what is that which Muhammad Ali does inside the ring, which is part of verbal communication? Loud I am, clear I am, but at the same time, one thing which we all can learn is the art of punch. You know what's a punch? If you don't know, <coughs> demonstrate it. It's called a verbal punch. 
A verbal punch is the same as when you underline a few words in the report which you said to somebody. Highlighting uncertain words. Suppose if I were to say that uh, it is nice to be important, but it is more important to be nice. It's a very nice proverb. It is nice to be important, but it is more important to be nice. But if I say it as, it is nice to be important, but it is more important to be nice. Or if I say that uh, in today's world, we must not use yesterday's methods to be in tomorrow's business. I'm loud, I'm clear, yes, but if I punch, the assertiveness of the leader comes out. He sounds more convincing when he speaks that way. You know, friends, why am I elaborating on this so much? Because I do not want us to take away the simple understanding that, yes, leader has to be good communicator. How? So I would say that if I improve on my verbal communication, the delivery of my thoughts becomes impactful. So if I say in today's world, I forgot, what is that? In today, oh, I'm recording. In today's, I can't act. In today's world, we must not do yesterday's methods to be in business tomorrow. But if I want to create an impact, I should say it as, in today's world, we must not do yesterday's methods to be in tomorrow's business. That way, the person who's listening to me starts paying more attention. So it may be a very small thing, but it is important because it is part of communication. Are you understanding what I'm saying, ma'am? Yes. Good, thank you. Just checking once in a while. So I have to be loud, I got to be clear. I need to punch on certain words to create an impact. At the same time, I need to pause. I actually need to pause. Because <laughs> I'm a little nervous, because I'm not used to like talking continuously, but uh, your eye contacts are making me feel good. Right, bro? Okay, I'm sitting there, okay, I'm giving you three marks out of 10, but carry on. <laughs> <laughs> you can, but don't show it to me. Yeah. Communication is also about body language. Again, all in the context of leaders. You can't be a leader in a meeting, in a meeting, either you're conducting it or somebody's conducting it for you, but you're there as a leader. You cannot, I would say you should not. Maybe you should avoid body language which reflects lethargy, which reflects the lack of interest in the process of communication. By God, you are a leader here. Yeah? You're supposed to inspire just merely by body language. And then there are some. <laughs> yeah. Have you done that? Yeah. See, uh, Mr. Mayur, you have to work on this. Is the, are you sleeping? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? You're a leader, man. And then this converts into beautiful mouth openings called yawns. <laughs> There are yawns which can even create melodies which are completely besur in Hindi as they say. <laughs> sometimes you hear the yawns, sometimes the yawns are so big you can actually check, oh your systems are good, liver, kidney, everything is good. <laughs> this is not body language of a leader. They sit with their hands like this, what are you watching some movie in Damodar city or something? Even there you can't sit like this. I tried. <laughs> the, where is your assertiveness of a leader? This is completely passive. Gary, how are you? Good. I told you I'm going to take your name, right? Love you. I'm getting recorded. I just realized. Then that thing happens. <clears throat> Stuff. Drowsiness. I would say, friends, that as a leader, even my sitting posture has to be assertive. Do you know that? I mean, I'm sure you know this, that a leader has to be not only just a communicator, but also a listener. And in listening, your body language plays an important role. You can't just sit like this and make a person feel as if you're so involved. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. It's about your spinal cord being straight because that is called the attentive posture. How are you? You can see me? Yes, I can see. All right, thank you. Missing you a little bit, but anyways. So the, the body has to be straight because it shows that you're listening. At times, you've got to move your head like this. All right? Of course, then you want to say yes, sir. You can't just move it like that. <laughs> and if you don't agree, don't do this. That's not done. But sometimes you've got to move your head like that. You know why? Because body language can also not only send effective communication signals, body language can also motivate the, the speaker. Yeah. Imagine you're talking to your boss about a good client meeting and your boss is like, hmm, there's another one. Computer. Can you continue? Hmm. Hmm. After some time he's already left. This guy's just going on. Hmm. <laughs> it shows that this body language shows lack of interest here. Yeah. And you may say that, is it that important? Non-verbal is sometimes more important than verbal. In telephonic communication, we have so many Skype calls. We have you know, interviews by HRs done with a person maybe abroad. Your way of expression, whether it's verbal 
Our body language, I think, is something that we need to think about as leaders. Remember, I have a team, and my team has to look up to me, not by the way I sit. Even when we stand, there's a simple thing called palm on palm. There are people who stand as if their arms have been have been, uh, in India is the word, have been, uh, have been stuck with glue. Hello. This is not assertive body language. This is not assertive body language. This is defensive body language. Don't come close. Don't come close. Alright. No, you're okay. <laughs> As a listener, it's okay. And there's one more. No, no, I understand what. No, listen, let me finish. Finger pointing. Now, whether you're speaking to a junior or senior, the communication has to be the same because respect is important. So I only hope that we think about it. I wish this was a longer session, but I can't go further. But I would only say, I've shown you things which we should avoid in terms of body language while we stand. But when we stand, something which we can do. It's called palm on palm. Do you know palm on palm has a link to acupressure? It reduces stress. If I'm going to stand in front of a very, very important person, I'm nervous. My hands shiver. My hands sweat. It happens. I'm human. 98%. <laughs> <laughs> only some know. <coughs> Don't tell everyone. This is called palm on palm because there are acupressure points here and here which get pressed. So when you're, you know, when you want to enhance your confidence, this is good. Sometimes you got to use your hands, not by, you know, extending one finger. Say four fingers are good. I think just can I interject? You know, you're worried, like you're saying, what did I say? I'm just giving an example. All right. So, so it's about how you present your attitude with the help of effective communication. So we've talked about things, because I'm just realizing I have not too much of time, but I do have time. Yeah, I'll go. I'll continue. Okay. Now the serious note, have you have you been able to understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. The connect between a leader and communication is all I'm saying. Let's be powerful leaders, not by just saying, I'm very powerful. we got to be powerful by action. Even the way we walk. You know, when I'm, you can't walk like this. This can't be done. I've seen some people walking as if they've been pushed. So when you walk, that has to be. I'm not saying we got to be a RAM model like the way I am. I used to be. I used to. I'm honest. A long time back. Anyway, I used to. I used to. I used to. The walk, the walk. So when you're walking, the chest, the body, it has to be confident. When you stand, yes, sir, you call me. Even if you're the junior most, you got to stand like this. It shows your attitude of confidence. Can I now go to the next one? I'm just getting beautifully carried away. Where's that? Yeah. If the time goes beyond the rest of the remaining alphabets, you enjoy later on. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm thoroughly enjoying every alphabet. It's an interesting statement, isn't it? I'm thoroughly enjoying every alphabet. What's the alphabet? Okay, what is this? Oh, quickly, because I also want you to have lovely lunch later. So, is there lunch later? Okay, just check. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, what lunch? Yes, tell me, you've been smiling beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. You're almost saying, like, now enough, <coughs> let's go. Right. Just kidding. Oh, 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 anyone? How are you, sir? Personality, especially when that's good. Without it, you're good, but I'm saying it's Yes. Opportunity. Good. Good. Opportunity. A leader has to keep knocking on or looking out for opportunities. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Hmm? When my face drops, take it as a signal. <laughs> You've taken mine. <laughs> okay. So, have you. Was the paper leaked or something? <laughs> she gets the C correct, she gets the, the city together. The C is my colleague here. I know. <laughs> well, what am I talking about is, is as a leader, if somebody, if, and uh, you're right, and I can't go do too much of O because there are other alphabets, so let me just continue. O for me is not just open, openness to criticism. Leaders sometimes don't like to be criticized. And that's why people don't give them the right feedback. So how is the marketing process going on? So it's going on good. Actually, it isn't. But because I know my boss doesn't like it. He doesn't like to hear negative things. That's wrong. The perception should be created that if there is something negative, feel free to tell me. Because I'm a leader. I'll help you out. 
openness to even being criticized for your own functions. There is a, an instrument in HR called the 360 degree feedback, correct me if I'm wrong, which creates that, but every organization may not activate that. At, a, at an individual level, Amrita, I should be open to somebody saying that, sir, you know, the presentation you made, I think we could have improved a little bit more. <clears throat> so I shouldn't say, uh, do you, why, why do you say so? Okay, next time, no promotion. <laughs> Internally. Ego is out, no? So I would say, I would like to highlight that as a leader, I should, that's, that, that happens. <laughs> I, I talk here, people are brought there. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. They're just like, what the hell is he talking? Enough. <laughs> what is this sabotage or what? What's happening, bro? I'm just asking, don't answer. I'm just <laughs> it's rhetoric. I just ask. I make you uncomfortable. I come back. I'm so happy. Somebody asked me, crack jokes, huh? Tomorrow, Aruna was asking. Crack, will you crack jokes tomorrow? I said, I can't crack jokes just like that. I'm basically, uh, you know, I don't know what I do. Yes, people find it funny. But going on, coming back, hi, how are you? Good. Openness. If you say that, Mayur, enough. You know, I think you've been bouncing off too much. Now just sh keep quiet and just do your work. I should be open to that criticism also, <laughs> hoping that it's not coming. But I'm not just joking about it. Sometimes you should allow people to express their observations about you. Otherwise, we will never be able to see our own back. And there's one more thing. Openness to criticism doesn't mean you swallow everything. There is an analysis that you have to do. So that decision you made, or we made, obviously he made, but we are a team. So it, it was, I felt it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't required. We could, have, we could have postponed that decision for three months, sir. That comfort if you create in your team to come up to you and point out a criticism without he feeling no fear. I believe the team works better. Because if he says, you, the decision you made, I, I don't agree with it, at least if you're a good leader, you'll at least discuss, no? At least you'll say, explain why you feel so. And if it is sensible, probably we'll be more sensible to make correct decisions next time. I'm tired. Are you getting my point, lady? How are you? You're okay? Openness is when somebody criticizes, take it, analyze it, but don't swallow it. But don't create the... The barrier where people feel fear to share something with you. So openness to criticism. Somebody said, why not openness in terms of cabin? Sometimes people feel scared to get inside a knock knock. They'll first knock knock in their head. Should I go in? Should I not? You know what I'm talking about. <coughs> there are some. That's also a lack of openness. Having people to feel free enough to come up to you and talk to you, forget criticism, is also openness. Exactly, you are it. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, I make my point here, they clap. <laughs> but are you, so are you understanding what I'm saying? You know, there are people who will, who will not want others to just come in. And I'm of the view that a leader should be free enough. He should, be, he should create a perception that with my boss, so I can walk in any time. If he's busy, he tells me. If he's very busy, he says, we'll meet later. If he's a little busy, he says, if it's very critical and very sensitive issue, he'll say, that is openness at a physical level, literally. Can I go to the next one? Is that all right? It's going to flow and stuff. Thanks. How do I spell openness? It's O P E N N, right? E S S, no? Yes, openness. How is it, Baba? Openness? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to a one which I would I would like you to think a lot about. N. And don't say new ideas because it's already come. Innovation. <laughs> think. I'll have it later. <laughs> what is N? It's a nice one. Nutrient. <laughs> a leader new, needs to feed nutrients. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? N? When I said no new ideas, that word, people are like, oh God. <laughs> As a leader? Neutral. Neutral, very nice. Being unbiased, being neutral, very nice. Natural. 
natural, so beautiful, natural. No pretense, no putting on. Be natural, be the way you are. Absolutely fine. Yeah, I've still not got it from you guys. <laughs> Something I can throw as a surprise. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you talk about the end. <laughs> Of course, nice is being humble in that way. He's a, you know, use that so commonly. That person who's joined in, he's a really nice guy. I think probably what it, it, the embedded meaning is, he's a humble guy. But the word that I think a leader should also think about, especially in the context of his team, is a word which I would like to use for myself also is, It's called nurture. Right? How we nurture a child. Actually, nurture tilts more towards a plant, a sapling. And somewhere I believe that even our team could be a bunch of saplings. There could be some plants, some wanting to be trees. If you know what I'm saying, I like to speak metaphorically. <laughs> All good, sir. As we grow as leader, they say that it's a very nice proverb in English. Help them grow and grow with them. Nurture is what? It's mentoring. Nurture is when you help somebody, give them the constructive criticism, give them positive feedback, make them attend seminars probably, help them grow, grow with them. So in some way, am I doing that with my team is a question I should ask myself. It will qualify <coughs> me as a good leader if I do some nurturing. <coughs> There are people who join the organization with excellent attitude, but competency is not good. Some people join the organization, competency is best, attitude is not good. That's where we need nurturing. <coughs> we got to bring a balance. And yes, we're having fun, I'm having a good time, they're having a good time. <laughs> but the underlying current of what I'm sharing, if you can pick up, I'm most happy here. <laughs> Love you. <coughs> so I just ask you, you're a leader. Yes, you have a team. Yes. Are you guiding your team? Uh, I do sometimes. I tell them, no, have a constructive guidance session of maybe half an hour in a week. You find somebody whose communication is not good. Help them. That's nurture. Remember, friends, for me, my team's performance is my performance. If my team does well, I should feel good about it because now I'm leading that team, right? So nurturing is helping somebody to become better, helping somebody to improve. You find somebody who's not good at ideas. There are others who are really thinking out of the box. Help him. So in different ways, you can nurture a person to grow. I love you, Avanish. <coughs> I love you. Is that okay? Is the point taken, sir? Right? Is the point taken in terms of how...